Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy Allison. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer and I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons online and locally in Austin, Texas. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use dummy clips to change presets in Native Instruments Massive. I've already loaded Massive onto a MIDI track, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up Massive so we can take a look at it. Massive is a great synth to use for live performance because it's really light on the CPU and it's highly versatile. The other thing that makes it really awesome is these macros. These macros can be assigned to multiple parameters just like Ableton Racks, and then you can configure the macros in Ableton, so that way you can MIDI map them to a controller. This is really handy so that you can change presets, and as long as your macros are assigned, you don't have to remap your controller and everything will be automatically assigned, much like Ableton Rack. So to set Massive up so it'll take program change, the first thing we need to do is go into the browser and then click on Programs if it's not already highlighted. This will open up your program list. And then you can go into your patches, like any patches, your patches, third party, anything you might have downloaded. You can click on it and it'll display the patches here. And then I can just start to select maybe different sounds that I might want to use. So we'll just set this up as kind of a bass synth. And I'll just pick some, some of my, some of my bass patches. We'll just get three. You know. Yeah, we'll grab that one as well. All right, so now I got, I got three patches over here in my program list. Can't hear that one. A little too low. And the cool thing about these program lists is you can actually save them. And let's go ahead and call this Performance 2. And you can load them so that I can go back and load a different one. Now the next critical step is you have to actually turn on this little power button. This little power button will allow it to receive program change. So now you can send, like if you're actually using a synth that sends program change, now you can use the program change buttons on the synth to change banks. Pretty handy. But in Ableton, I like to automate that. So we're going to create a MIDI track. Let me move Massive out of the way here real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and rename the track to Program Change Massive. I'm going to create three clips just by double clicking. And then I'm going to go ahead and say MIDI from none. So we don't actually accidentally get any MIDI from something else. And I'm going to route the MIDI to massive. And I'll just leave the MIDI two on track one because we just want to send program change. Now on the clip, let me select the first clip. All I need to do is change the program in the notes section, which you can open and close right here. I'm just going to change that to one. I'm going to go to the next clip. Change that to two, and then the third clip to three. And the next thing I want to do, just for now, is I want to select all of these clips and just go ahead and set the global quantization to none. This way, it won't the the clip will trigger as soon as I press it, not based on the global quantization setting of Ableton. So now I'm going to go ahead and fire the first clip, and you'll see that it cues up bass house. So now I can just use these clips to change my program. Now from here, it's just about naming things. I like to have the different colors of the clips, then I also like to have the number of the program. And then I, I generally name what patch it is too, so I can quickly figure it out. And I'm just gonna do one, two, and three for now, so I don't have to name each one. So now, now how this is handy, this becomes my palette for my live performance set. And I can also go into MIDI map mode and map these clip slots to maybe a foot controller or some other controller so that I can quickly select different patches. The other way it's really handy is in the context of a song. So if I were to create a couple of MIDI tracks, for example, here, and we'll pretend these are songs, you know, this is like one song that has different sections. I can decide what sound that I want when I want it. I'll just copy and paste some different 
presets here. Now though, you want to make sure to quantize them. So I'll select both clips and quantize them to one bar. This way, the, the, when I launch, do the scene launch, if it wasn't quantized, what happens when I do a scene launch? That'll trigger right away. And if you're still in the middle, in the middle of playing a phrase, it might not work out. But in this scenario, if you have some backing clip go going, and then when we trigger the next section, it'll cue everything in at the same time. So you finish the phrase, boom, the preset changes, you play the next part. Really handy on that for that level. And then of course you can also, since you've copied and pasted them, this, these will still be MIDI mapped so that you can change them on the fly too for more improvisational type stuff. And that about covers it. Um, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Jimmy Allison. I teach online. If you're interested, send me an email or go to my website. And if you, and if you live in Austin, Texas, make sure to join the local Austin Ableton user group. And I can also teach locally from your place or mine.